So we got a comment on YouTube asking how you can orchestrate both Airbyte and DBT in a single Airflow DAG. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. And it's pretty easy. So I'm in VS Code now and I put together a quick little project for this video. You can see that I have three different folders. The first one being our Airflow project, the second one being DBT, and then the third one being Postgres as our destination database. I have Airbytes on a separate directory right now running on the OSS version. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up. That way we know that Airbyte is running and we're actually going to be moving data with Airbyte here. While that's loading up, let me quickly run through exactly how this is going to work. So Postgres is just a simple Docker compose file spinning up a Docker container for this Postgres database where we're going to be sending data into. The dbt folder is obviously going to contain our dbt project. From there is where we're going to be writing our dbt models, our custom models in SQL on top of the data that's in the destination. And then lastly, Airflow is going to contain our DAGs where we're going to orchestrate the Airbyte jobs. And then once the Airbyte jobs finish, then we're going to move over to dbt and then write the models on top of the data inside the destination. And now the question was how you can do that effectively in one single DAG. First, let me show you how this is looking on the DBT side. So if you go into the models folder, and obviously some of the prerequisites here is that you have some experience in writing DBT models using Airbyte, as well as some basic understanding of Airflow and what it does. We're not gonna go into that in this video, but if you wanna know anything about that in a different video, let us know down in the comments. Whenever you spin up a simple DBT project, you get sent you know, these first initial DBT models uh, as examples. I've kept them for the sake of this video. We don't really need to you know, go into writing custom models for this. This is simply just to show as an example of how you can sync and orchestrate both Airbyte and DBT in Airflow. It's a pretty standard DBT project here. The only thing I've truly modified is the profiles for DBT. And I, if I go to my home directory and I need to find my DBT, DBT. Let's open up the profiles folder inside of VS Code. And you can see that this is pointing directly to the Postgres Docker container. As you can see on the host side is host.docker.internal, as well as all the other information you need. And it's targeting the dev profile. So that's really the only change I did to the DBT project. Obviously, this is going to look a little different for you, depending on what kind of environments you're working in, whether that be a development environment or a production environment, you can, you can have both. And all this information is going to be custom to your specific instance. And now if we go over to the airflow side, which is obviously where we want to be, I have cloned exactly what, you know, Docker compose file on the airflow documentation is required. And the couple things to note here on the volume side underneath the X airflow common service is going to be where I've pointed and mapped essentially from my local machine to the Docker container, the files that I need. And so the two that I absolutely need were going to be the actual DBT project. And so I've pointed to my home directory and to the actual DBT project, which is gonna be named orchestration for me, as you can see right here. And I've mapped that to the opt directory inside of Docker and then to DBT. And then I've also taken my root folder for the DBT that contains my profile and then map that to the same kind of directory inside of the Docker container as well. You will also note that there is a temp Airbyte local that is also for Airflow to be able to kind of see and, and manage Airbyte when you create your DAGs. And so those are the changes I've made in the Docker Compose file that it came with. Here, I created my own Docker file so that when you spin up these containers, you're gonna be pulling this exact image from Airflow. You're gonna change into the Airflow user and then you do need to install these packages needed in order to actually have this orchestration and the DAG properly run for dbt. So obviously we're getting the Airbyte provider as well as the HTTP provider, which is a dependency for Airbyte on the Airflow side. And then if you're not using the dbt cloud service, you're gonna be wanting to pull the correct adapters for dbt. And in my case, I'm using dbt Postgres. You know, if you were using BigQuery, for example, you would do dbt BigQuery and whatever adapter you need that dbt provides, you would install that as well. And so I simply have that running. So that way, when the containers are all live, they have these packages installed. The other thing is going to be this simple little shell or I guess you could say like bash script where I can just run this and it'll start up Airflow 
for me. This isn't required, but it is a nice to have for sure when you're running these kinds of projects, especially with Airflow. And into the main thing, we're gonna go into the DAGs folder and into my specific DAG that I've written, which is going to be dbt underscore airbyte. And here is the bread and butter of this whole project. This is how dbt and airbyte come together and how Airflow is able to essentially orchestrate the both. So let me run through this really quickly. So obviously I have all of my packages and imports that I'd needed at the top. The first one being my bash operator and the second one being the airbyte trigger sync operator from the airbyte provider from Airflow. The two lines up here on seven and eight are going to be my dbt paths. And you notice that I'm pointing directly to the paths inside of the Docker container and not my local machine. So I have everything in Docker for simplicity's sake in, in the sense that I want everything to be able to talk to each other. And that kind of simulates also what you would probably see in a development or a production environment. Here, I'm taking the manifest path and I'm kind of setting up my the DAG later. So that way I can kind of go through every single node inside of the manifest, which will essentially be the streams that we go through later. This con ID value is going to be the connection ID that will be specific to your Airbyte instance. And so I've taken mine and I can show you exactly where to get that in a second. And this is where the DAG starts. So we're gonna say with DAG and the parameters inside of that is going to be the DAG ID. So whatever name you want the DAG to be inside of the Airflow you, web, uh, web UI is going to be this. So I've named it dbt underscore Airbyte underscore DAG. The start date, we use Pendulum to do the start date, which is going to be today. Catch up, we've set to false as a default value. And then as DAG, and then that's where it starts. So the first one is going to be our Airbyte sync. And so I've named it Airbyte underscore sync, utilizing the Airbyte trigger sync operator. And the parameters under there are going to be pretty default here. Our task ID is going to be Airbyte Postgres, meaning that you know we're syncing data from Postgres to Postgres in our case. So I've named it that. The Airbyte con ID is going to be Airbyte con, and I'll show you exactly where to set this up inside of the Airflow UI. The connection ID is exactly what we set up here. So we've set it to that value. A Asynchronous, if you want Airbyte to run asynchronously to any other jobs in Airflow, then you would set this to true. I set this to false because we want Airbyte to run first. And then when that job is finished, then we want dbt to run. We set the wait seconds to three and then the timeout to 3600. And obviously you can adjust this based off your needs. Now, the next one is going to be the dbt tasks. So obviously there's a couple things and a couple different streams inside of our Postgres instance and, you know, different models. And so we're essentially doing this control flow, creating a dictionary and running through every single node inside of dbt, creating the tasks and then running this bash command, which is important. Obviously, you know, this is just my example and how I would attack this. Whatever way you want to attack dbt, there's different ways you can absolutely do this. And this is the way that I've done it, but your results may vary in terms of how you want to run dbt. But, uh, you know, take this with a grain of salt. The main portion you want to focus on here is going to be this part. So we're using the bash operator to run this command. And so I CD into the dbt path, which is going to be where I've mapped it in the Docker volume. And then we're running this command. So we're going to run dbt run models. And then obviously the node info will be the name of the model. Uh, we have two that we're going through and then we're pointing to the profile that we want to run. So that way we dbt knows exactly what profile and where to set, uh, you know, where we're writing data on. So that's going to point directly to the profiles directory in Docker. And then down here is where we essentially create order of operations. So we're saying the Airbyte sync task should be run first before the dbt tasks uh, in this DAG. And obviously this runs under one single DAG. So uh, that is how everything is set up. So Airbyte will run first and then dbt will run second. Now that we have a view of how this project's going to run, let me show you exactly how that's going to go. So let me go ahead and Docker compose up on the Postgres side and run the database. So the database is now live. I'm gonna be on this end and I'm going to CD into Airflow and I'm going to do slash star.sh and that's going to go ahead and run Airflow for us. Okay, so now I have a web browser up. First, I'm gonna load up Airbyte, which is gonna be localhost 8000. The username is going to be Airbyte and it should be just password on that front and I should get into the Airbyte UI. So you can see that I have my connector set up. The one we're gonna focus on is the Postgres to Postgres one. Let me zoom in here so everyone can see. When I click this, you, you'll note that after the connections flag on the URL, 
We have this ID uh, right here. And if we go back to VS Code, you'll notice that it matches exactly what is here in my con ID value. So that is where you'll get your connection ID. You'll start Airbyte first, create your connector inside of Airbyte with both your source and destination. And then that will create your connector ID, which will you'll want for the DAG. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and load up Airflow now that I've started it. So that's gonna be localhost port 8080. And that's going to get me into the web UI. And now you can see that dbt underscore airbyte underscore DAG is here. Uh, but before we run this, there is an important step you'll want to do in Airflow. If you go to the admin tab and go to connections, you'll see that I have an airbyte con connection right here. And uh, that is important because we need that if we go back to VS Code again, you'll see that the airbyte con is listed as airbyte con. So you do need to set that up in order for Airflow to know that like, you know, how to connect to airbyte. All right, so back inside of Airflow. So you can see that I'm like, when I've clicked edit connection, you'll see that there's the connection ID. You want to name it exactly what you set inside of Airflow. My connection type, if you click this drop down, you'll have a list, but you wanna set it to Airbyte. The host, obviously everything's in Docker. So for me, everything is going to be host.docker.internal. And then the login password is going to be exactly the, what you've set inside of Airbyte. For me, it's the default values. So that was Airbyte. It's not listed here, but I wrote down the password. And then the port is going to be 8,000, which we've used to access the web UI. So after you've set all of this, inside of your connection, you can click save and go back to the DAGs. And now that everything is running for me, I can go ahead and click on this DAG and enable it. So we're gonna unpause this DAG and we're gonna click auto refresh here. And then now we're going to click trigger DAG. So now the DAG is running. And what we should notice is if I go back to Airbyte here, we'll notice that it's now triggered a sync on this connection. So we've successfully know that Airflow is now looking at Airbyte. And so we're gonna run that sync now and it's going to wait. So obviously it's gonna wait for Airbyte Postgres to run first. And then down here, you can see all the nodes that control flow has, has gone through. And so it's now seen that Airbyte has hit its success. So now it's running through all the different models inside of dbt and so now we're going through all of that so we're going to let that run and now you can see that it has successfully run airbyte ran first and then all the models from dbt have run successfully if we go back here we'll notice that there are trans transactions going on at on the postgres side and so i've already had this running and so you can see that we've written a couple files here and I'm gonna go ahead and create another tab here, post that in there. So I forgot a quote there, but you can see that we've successfully written one row from the Postgres public, my second dbt model. And that's exactly how you can orchestrate both Airbyte and dbt into a single Airflow DAG. There's going to be more information on our docs that you can check out, but hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other questions, please let me know down in the comments section below and we will get to them. But other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.